Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is June 13, 2022. This is a special edition. The market continued to sell off today. So I thought I'd come on and uh, do a quick review of the market and highlight a couple of the things that I saw in addition. Do a little follow-up on this, a few trade ideas that I presented on one of the weekend video. So stay tuned. And before I begin, I need you to click the thumbs up to help me promote this video on YouTube. And if you are looking for an unbiased, objective view on the market, then click the subscribe to subscribe to this channel. And be sure to click the notification icon to turn on notifications so you won't miss any of my future videos. Now let's start off with this intraday chart here. Are you still looking for capitulation? Well, let me show you. This might be a capitulation that you've been looking for. Look at here, this is the up-down volume ratio. That's the ratio between the up volume and the down volume. When it's negative, that means imply that the down volume is greater than the up volume. I'm pointing at 7.20 a.m. Pacific time, and that's 10.20 uh, a.m. Eastern time. And the ratio, look at this number here, because that's where uh, this marker here is 91.467. That's saying 91 to 1 in favor of the down volume on this ratio here. So that is pretty damn negative. <laughs> so if that's not capitulation, maybe this will convince you it's capitulation. This is 99.1. Right? It's almost like 100% of the volume, traded volume in that this uh, period is down volume. Right? We're talking about 99 to 1. Down volume over up volume. That's the ratio. Okay, we finished off the day at 59 or almost 60 to 1. And in addition to that, look at the advanced decline. Remember in the New York Stock Exchange, there's only a few, you know, uh, over 3,000 uh, stock traded in the New York Stock Exchange. And on the open, there was 2,669 stock, you know, on a decline. Okay, and here we could go down and look at this extreme here at this time point and see what the value is. And here we're pointing at 2,863 more declining stock than advancing stock. And here when it's 99 to 1, we saw 2,905 more declining stock than advancing stock. And also look at the VIX. The VIX been hovering above this 30 uh, level here and finished off at 34.3. And also the put call ratio ever since uh, last week, you know, on uh, Friday, we saw it came up to above one. And today it's just sitting above one all day long. And here, this looked like the uh, peak here. And this is uh, 1.3, you know, put call ratio. And it finished off at 1.265. And also the number of new high versus new low. You can see that the, uh, uh, there are more new low you are more stock making new 52 week low than 52 week high by a margin of 808. So that means there's 808 more stock making 52 week low than number of stock making 52 week high. And now let's take a look at this intraday chart here. You can see that the down volume just keep on building uh, throughout the session here. Uh, looking at the NASDAQ, the up down volume ratio at the end of the day, at the end of the session, is only 5.6. So that's not too bad. And the Russell 2000 is only 10 to 1 on the downside. But the New York is almost 60 to 1 on the downside. And you can see that the uh, advanced decline, basically, as soon as it's open, you know, the uh, number of stock going uh, down is just uh, starting to pile up. And here we see it's over 3,000. And uh, here's the uh, NASDAQ. Similar to NASDAQ, it's over 3,600 more declining issue than advancing issue. And the other things I want to uh, show you here is the, uh, the ticks. I remember uh, in uh, the uh, other video, earlier video, I point out that when the tick is uh, positive 500 to positive 1000, uh, that's the zone that we call the buy program zone. That's where a lot of buy program is uh, active. And when it is uh, minus uh, 500, to minus 1,000, that's the sell program zone. A lot of sell program is being activated. And when it get below 1,000, there's a lot of strong sell program. And similarly, when it get up above 1,000, you have strong buy program. 
So you can see today, most of the tech is down here in this region between minus 500 and minus 1,000. And a lot of them is actually much more negative than 1,000. Uh, we even got a few that went under uh, minus 1,500. And you look at on the top here, you know, maybe we've got one, possibly two that is above 1,000. And then a few, you know, between the uh, 500 and 1,000. So you can see there are a lot of selling, right? They basically just, sell, you know, selling it at the bid. Right? <laughs> That's where you get the down take. Okay, when you sell, you know, while buying at the ass, then that's where you get the uptake. Okay, so uh, so you can see that it's pretty negative today, and you can see the cumulative take, and you know, the basically is the cumulative sum of these up down take is uh, pretty negative. Similarly, if you look at the Nasdaq, likewise, you see a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, time spent down here with these negative take between minus five hundred and minus one thousand, and a lot of them. You know, at uh, minus 1500 or, or lower, you see this opening tick is way down here, got close to 2000, similarly on the New York Stock Exchange. So, definitely, it's a uh, uh, really broad and heavy selling uh, session here. Okay, so, uh, so we gotta be careful. You know, we still got some more uh, event uh, that are uh, kind of due to come out this week, like the FOMC uh, announcement on the interest rate height, and, uh, and then we also have the uh, quad witching uh, uh, option expiration this Friday as well. So there's quite a number of things that could drive this market up and down with a lot of volatility. So just be careful. Now let's take a look at this daily chart of the S&P 500. As you can see, I have updated the marker here on the uh, from the all-time high to the uh, close, today's close, and essentially, the S&P 500 has lost 22.18% from its high. So that officially put the S&P 500 in a bear market. So in addition to that, I also have put in the uh, marker here for the expected move lower range for the week and the upper range for the week. So let me shift this over so we can see this a little bit more clear. And the uh, lower range is 37.70 pretty much to 37.25 and the upper range is uh, 4,040 and 4,060 that's the zone for the upper range and as you can see that today's low almost came down to this 37.35 and the low of the day was uh, 37.34 so it got pretty close so we'll keep an eye on this range here because if it come to this range and dip down then we could easily looking at the possibility of the S&P 500 come down to this 50% retracement here near the uh, 3506 and possibly come down and check this pivot high here. Okay, remember that pivot high? That is basically pre-pandemic high before the pandemic uh, crashes here. So that is at 3393.52. So that is pretty much close in close proximity of this 50% uh, retracement. Also, the other thing is, I also want to show you a couple other techniques that you might want to use to kind of get a gauge where are some of the other level that the S&P 500 might tag or might be headed. So one of the things is, let's do this Fibonacci retracement and using this as the swing, and you can see that it bounced back up, pulled back, you know, kind of, uh, came back up to this 38.2, and now it broke it, you know, broke this pivot here, broke this low, and now it's coming down. So the next level that we could watch is possibly this 35.85. This is the 127 uh, extension. Okay, so, so that's one possibility of where the S&P might be headed in the uh, near term if it continue to break below this uh, expected move, the weekly expected move, and especially break this lower range. Now, then the other thing is, we can also take a look at the symmetry move, basically projecting this swing from this pivot uh, down and see where that might lead. Okay, so we basically use the Fibonacci extension tool, and we just do this, pivot up, and here's the 100%, which would place it at 3355. 
and that's pretty close to this pivot high here near the 33.93. Remember, that's the uh, pre-pandemic high, this pivot high here. Okay, so those are some of the levels that you might want to keep an eye on, you know, because there are different type of traders that are looking at these levels using these different tools. Okay, so we basically need to see what our other trader might be watching. Okay, so that is the S&P 500. Now let's take a look at a couple of the trade ideas that I uh, put forth on uh, one of the weekend video and start off with the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. One of the uh, swing long scenario that I uh, put out was basically looking for this, the price to break above Friday's value area and then come back and do a little bit of a test and go and then come up and uh, do for this 405 target here. Now, obviously, that's not going to happen because today, you know, it gapped down. So this scenario is not uh, going to be uh, uh, in play, right? So right now, the price came down, and the other one was basically looking for this to come down to this zone and then break back up. So and then we look for it to come up and target this right here, you know, this uh, uh, 397, this point of control here, this virgin point of control, and then throw it up. To this uh, 405 and that is close to this value area okay, from here this uh, this high volume area okay so that is still a possibility because we're looking at the price to come down you see that the price came down close to this lower uh, range of the expected move the low range is between 370 uh, 376 and uh, 373 so it came down pretty close to this 373. So we'll see, you know, if it come up, then we look for this pop here. We look for the setup here. You know, basically, you would see it would be a test and go, and then come up and swing long. Be patient and wait for a bounce, and then look for a uh, a swing long setup. Uh, if it uh, show up, if it doesn't, hey, fine. You know, we just wait for the, another trade, right? The next trade to come by. All right, so uh, that's the uh, the spy and the next one is apple i also put out a trade idea on apple and a couple of the potential long scenario right one is again similarly to the spy is to break out of this uh you know friday's value area doing a test and go and come up to this 143 you know this upper range of the expected move the weekly expected move uh, uh range here between 143 and 143.30 and uh, that's basically uh, also in confluence with this high volume zone here that is from back here, okay? Back in, uh, uh, what is that? The May 26th time frame. okay? So so that's, again, you know, looking at the price action today, it gapped down, so this is no longer uh, uh, possible, right? This setup. So I'm gonna take this off uh, and basically just concentrate on this setup here. This setup is looking for it to break this value area, break this come down, and then break this value area and come up. Then we'd be uh, targeting 138 as the initial target, and then throw it up to this 143. Okay, so this is still possible, even though it broke to uh, broke down into uh, you know pass through this uh, zone here. So right now we're basically looking for this thing to come back up and maybe chop and then go. So we could uh, still look for this sort of a setup. We'll see, but uh, that's basically what I'm uh, uh, waiting on Apple. And the third one that I want to talk about is Tesla. I also put that on uh, one of the uh, weekend video. And again, with basically uh, one of the scenarios, basically this value area, you know, the uh, test and go, right? uh, come up to this uh, 740 and then uh, targeting 780 on the trailing uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, position there. But again, you know, we, uh, this right here is no longer in play because it gapped down. But the other one is on this uh, micro composite uh, profile here. And this is the uh, point of control of this composite, which is sitting at 663. So we're basically looking for the price that if the price come into this zone, we're basically looking for this thing to break out of this zone and then come up and target this 740 and trail it up to the 780. Now you can also come up and uh, you know use the initial target of uh, this level here somewhere around 690, 
right? As your uh, first target, and your second target is six, seven, at 740, and then your third target is 780. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, the trade idea that uh, I presented on the weekend and just want to follow up after today's uh, price action. So there are still scenario there for us to monitor for potential uh, swing long. But again, this week is a volatile week, so be careful. And if you decide to just kind of step aside and stand in a sideline and be a spectator, that is a good idea as well. You know, because uh, anything could happen this week, and especially with today, you look at here, let me present you with this list here. And this is the, uh, right, this is the uh, 11th sector in the S&P 500. As you can see, they are all down multiple percentage, okay? And then some of the subsector, like the uh, semiconductor, down 5.5%, the uh, home builders, 5%. And the uh, uh, the banks, the you know the small bank and the regional bank, they are down close to three percent, you know over three percent, and even oil is down six point eight percent. Okay, so uh, you know the energy sector is also not doing well, and there are a lot of lot of news going to be uh, coming out this week that could move the market. So be sure to smash the thumbs up to help me promote this video. Thank you for watching and stay safe.